everyone! So we all know that dating can be a super nerve-wracking process during which we constantly question our choices like our makeup, our hair, and our choice of outfit. Well today all of that is going to change because the best look for a first date actually all boils down to science. Kimberly video where I get to be the test subject to demonstrate the perfect makeup for a first date according to science and that's going to include psychology, biology, and evolution. And we all know that I'm a relationship therapist not a makeup expert so I've enlisted the help of a pro. Jackie from Revlon was here in my office to decode my research and actually transform it into a look. In the next three minutes you're going to watch me go from blank canvas to ready for date night. As a therapist, I've literally seen that there's a huge connection between a woman's confidence and her skin. As we get older, that natural glow of our skin just kind of goes away. We get pimples, red spots, scars, wrinkles, you name it, we get it. So to counter this and to make the skin feel more youthful again, Jackie recommends using the works, concealer, foundation, and powder. These things smooth and even out the skin tone and basically prepare your face for the rest of the color that's about to go on. If you want lighter or sheerer coverage, Jackie recommends using long, smooth strokes. But if you have areas that need a little bit more coverage, Jackie recommends using a padding motion to cover up these areas. You have to choose a concealer that matches the color of your under eye circles. This kind of sounds counterproductive, but it actually works. Now defining your eyebrows is a key step because it not only helps add to the intense and dark look of the eyes, but it also helps balance our facial symmetry, which is a key element in human attractiveness. From an evolutionary perspective, large eyes are actually linked with resistance to disease. The dark ring around our eyes is called the limbal ring, and studies have shown that the darker this ring is around a woman's eyes, the more attractive she appears. This natural darkness is most prevalent when we're young, but we can fake it using eyeshadow and liquid liner. Jackie recommends a liquid liner which stays on for long wear and doesn't smudge, which for me is a huge plus. Just make sure your lash line is taut when you're applying this liquid line, making a ruler-like line by following the lashes in a smooth, straight line. And fortunately for me, to create this dramatic look with eyeshadow, we only need two colors, one light and one dark. Jackie recommends applying the lighter color all over your eyelid, from your lash line to your lower brow. This will smooth and highlight your skin, as well as create a canvas for the rest of the makeup. Now the purpose of the darker color is to increase the natural shadow that's in the crease of your eye. Jackie recommends applying just slightly above the natural crease of your eye, which gives your eyes a more open look. And the biggest tip of all in this stage is to blend, blend, blend. Eyelashes are at their darkest and thickest when we're young and healthy, so making your eyelashes super obvious is key to the scientific look. I'm terrified of fake lashes, so today we're going to be using layers and layers of mascara. To achieve this look, hold the brush starting at the roots of your lashes and make a zigzag or back and forth motion as you move the brush from the top of your eyelashes all the way to the ends. This technique actually gets more product on your eyelashes and can result in more volume and fullness. The next step is cheeks. Now, ovulating women have increased blood flow to the cheeks, which is why for centuries women have been using blush to kind of emulate that natural glow. So today we're going to make the cheeks flushed and glowy just by using a cream blush that's going to enhance that natural glow. Now ladies, the final step is lips. And red lips are nature's way of screaming, fertility, fertility. Women who are ovulating have redder lips than when they aren't ovulating. But a lot of women are terrified of using red lips in real life, like me. I've literally never used red lipstick for anything other than a dance recital. So if you are scared like me to use a red lipstick for the first time, Jackie recommends using a lip gloss or lip lacquer to kind of ease yourself into that process. To prevent lipstick bleeding, Jackie recommends putting on your liner after you put on your lipstick, and this will help your lipstick stay in place. Statistically, people who wear red on a first date are the most likely to end up in a relationship, so I'm going to put on a red top just to demonstrate this look. 
Finally, long and thick hair is a sign of fertility. Because let's face it, in the caveman ages, not everybody could grow long or thick hair, so it was considered biologically advantageous and a sign of good health. It's all biological. For a first date, your best bet is to wear your hair long and down as long as you can get it. If you have curly hair, try straightening to make it look more long. And if you're not afraid of them, even try using clipping extensions. So there you have it, the art of makeup boiled down to science. We've evened the skin tone to appear more youthful. We've brightened the cheeks for that ovulating glow. We've intensified the limbal ring by making it darker in contrast to the rest of the face. We've improved facial symmetry with eyebrows. We've added red lips to simulate ovulation. And we've taken the hair from up to down to demonstrate youth and fertility. But this doesn't feel scientific. I feel like I'm ready to go on a date. Aren't you married? Married people go on dates too with their partners, you know. Whatever. I'm curious, which look do you like better? At the end of the day, guys, it all boils down to confidence. One lucky person is going to win this gift basket from Revlon, chock full of Revlon products, including all of the products that we use in the video today. This is so much makeup and it's so good. I'm so excited. All you have to do is share the video via Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus with the hashtag Ask Kimberly and the hashtag Love is on. And the more times you share, the more you're going to get entered into the contest. So if you guys have more tips or comments or suggestions on how to apply makeup, join the conversation in the comments below. And hopefully you found this video helpful. I had so much fun making it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more weekly videos on self-esteem, confidence, and relationships. Have a great week everybody. Bye!